What's going on? My name is Jason Vong, and last year I made a video talking about why I highly recommend the 85 millimeter lens. And to be quite honest with you guys, I wasn't expecting half a million views. Even one year later in the last 28 days, it is still my most highly viewed video. So I figure why not do a sequel to it? Not only talk about why I still recommend the 85 millimeter lens, but also give you guys five advices on how to get some amazing shots with it. So once again, this video is sponsored by Zeiss, though again, a lot of the principles that I'll be talking about in this video is applicable to any 85 millimeters out there. However, a lot of the samples that'll be shown in this video is taken with the Zeiss Spot's 85 millimeter F1.8 by myself and by my good friends, Professor Hines and Ox Out. So we're not responsible for your impulsive purchase of this lens after the video. Number one, if you're shooting with an 85 millimeter lens, then you already won. A lot of the shots that you'll be getting out of this lens is gonna look fantastic. And that's because the shots that you'll be getting will be wildly different from a majority of the people out there, even if they're shooting with their own DSLR or mirrorless cameras. The reason why that is, is because the often highly recommended lens for general walk around photography tends to be either a 50 millimeter or a 35 millimeter. It used to be that, unless you're shooting a lot of weddings and portraits, there's really no need for an 85mm prime lens. Most people will skip on over to a 70 to 200 if they need a telephoto, but honestly, that is a big lens, especially if you want to use it casually. And most modern smartphones nowadays have a built-in ultra-wide angle lens, which, to be honest, actually looks pretty good. And even some phones have a built-in telephoto lens, which honestly doesn't look too shabby. There is no bashing on mobile photography on this channel. It has been proven that you can capture anything great on any type of devices. However, telephoto lenses on smartphones like this one here on the iPhone 12 is equivalent to about 50 millimeters. It doesn't have quite the reach like an 85 millimeter would. And when you start zooming in past the native focal length on a smartphone, the quality starts to drop fast. The 85 millimeter right off the bat is going to give you a lot more details compared to what you would get from a smartphone. It's going to be a lot sharper and it's going to give you better bokeh. Now, of course, this isn't specific to the 85 millimeter prime lens. As you climb up the millimeter ladder, you'll get all these benefits that I'm talking about as well, whether you're going up to 135, 200, 400, or even 600. But the reason why I suggest the 85 millimeter prime lens is because it has the perfect blending quality and size, especially the F1.8 lenses. They are tiny and compact. And in most instances, 1.8 is more than enough to give you that creamy background blur and handle well in low light situations. You can of course pick up an 85 that has a 1.2 or a 1.4 aperture value, and those will melt the background to oblivion. But the trade-off is, depending on the model, it can be a lot bulkier. By the way, if you're enjoying these edits from Professor Heinz, check out his Urban Street Tone preset packs for Lightroom and Photoshop. I'll have a link to his Etsy store in the description box below. Number two, you can turn any background into an epic backdrop for your photos and videos. Now, we talked a lot about this in the last video. The compression of telephoto lenses brings the background closer to your subject. It creates the illusion that the background is a lot closer than it seems, as opposed to using a wide angle lens where it pushes stuff away, making the background view far and tiny. With this in mind, you can literally cut out a certain portion of the background and use it as a backdrop for your subject with an 85 millimeter lens. And I'm not just talking about using a beautiful landscapes or artsy buildings as backdrops, but you can turn average ordinary locations into a great photo shoot or video shoot location. Even if it's not that appealing, you can blur it out with a 1.8 aperture and the blur results can make the background look a lot more interesting than it seems. Here's a recent example where I put this idea to use. I had my friend David Shrek a pose on the stairs and I honestly was not expecting the epicness of what he would do. All right, hold it right there. And we're just having fun. And this is, go this is going on the video, dude. I say, I say that's pretty. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I like it. I love it with the, with the flags too. Now, the building in the back isn't particularly interesting in person, but because I like how it was lit, I framed the middle portion of it and used it as a background for this portrait shot. And the result became a nice, bokelicious background for an epic posing photographer. 
Now, especially for videos, you might not always get the best location to film. For instance, my interview with Professor Hines from last year, we were working with a very busy background that I did not want to end up distracting the viewers. While I did from time to time cut to a wide angle shot to re-establish the scene, I mainly used the 85mm medium angle throughout the entire video. The blurred out busy traffic in the back actually made the shot look pretty cool. Number 3. Step away from the norm. And I think this advice is very clear by now based on all these sample photos that we've been showing throughout the video. People commonly say 85mm is great for portraits because it's the most flattering on human subjects. And that is very true. But even though the 85mm lens, being the telephoto lens that it is, can be a lot more versatile than you think. Do some street photography with it. Do some architecture photography with it. Hell, do your next Instagram photos with it. Take photos of things that people don't normally take photos of with a focal length like this, and you will start to instantly see things a lot differently. For me personally, I love getting wide shots with a telephoto lens like this. The trick is, you have to back up a lot further than you think. Now, of course, I could easily try to get the same shot with an ultra wide angle lens on my smartphone, but it's something about the challenge of using a telephoto lens to shoot a wide landscape shot just feels a lot more accomplishing. For example, here I was in the heart of downtown Los Angeles and I wanted to capture the entire scene here. That means no cutting off the skyscrapers. I could have easily pulled this off with a wide angle lens. Hell, even a 50 millimeter would have done the trick. But I only had one lens on me that night, and wouldn't you know it, it's the 85 millimeter. <gasps> I'm getting there. I think I need to be further. It took me some time to get the shot right because I really wanted a bit of the road as foreground in the shot. So I kept backing up and backing up and backing up until I ended up with something like this. Not bad. So far, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe for more. Help me boost the visibility of this video. And let me know in the comments down below what other lenses should I highlight in the next video. Number four, ground, <laughs> mid-ground, background. Foreground elements can add so much to your photos. Like, holy cow, you have no idea. Try layering as much as you can. Even though this is a very general leveling up your photography advice, doing it with an 85 millimeter lens is at a whole nother level. And truth be told, it's an advice that's often forgotten, even personally myself. Again, we talked about the compression bringing the background closer, but it can also push foreground closer to your midground as well. Adding a hint of foreground element really elevates the shot by tenfolds. Here's a couple of examples of the usage of foreground. This one, while not the most stellar shot, having that little foreground element on the left here helped make the shot feel a little more interesting. Now, I could have stuck around for better facial reactions, but we had to head somewhere else for sunset shot that day. But here in this example, I actually stuck around the construction site for a good 15 minutes to see what I can get. I tested out multiple scenes until I found the frame where you can see the electric scooters in the foreground and the guy in the vest in the background. So I was really working the scene there. I didn't know what I was really looking for, but I knew I wanted the truck. I wanted two trucks and I was shooting someone inside of that one truck. And I was shooting that one guy next to this one truck that's spinning. Excuse me, I don't know the terminology for all these things. And then as I was working and working and working the scene, I saw from my peripheral vision that something was coming. I thought it was a car, so I thought, okay, it's gonna really add to the scene. And then what do you know, it was like a Grubhub <laughs> biker that just like drove by, had a little bit of motion blur, gives that little city construction work vibe, and I like it, I like it a lot. I still snapped away and ended up with something like this. I was very, very satisfied with the layering in this photo, and I really love the red color of the delivery bag in this very blue dominated scene. Bonus tip here is to stick around, work the scene, and you'd be surprised with what you might end up capturing. And finally, number five. Five means stop. Just because you can shoot at f1.8 doesn't mean you have to shoot it all the time. Try stopping down from time to time, f2.8, f4, f5.6, because sometimes when things are too blurry, it loses context. Wow, I'm a Boca whore and I love seeing creamy backgrounds that get me excited. You know, I swear these jokes write themselves. To the other person, they may not understand what I'm trying to capture. 
For example, this shot right here with my friend David who's taking a photo. I saw in between the branches in the back, someone else was having their own little video shoot going on, on a gimbal, taping his friend riding an electric scooter. I thought, hey, this would make a pretty cool juxtaposition with all the photo and video shoots happening. But because I shot it at f1.8, David became a blur blob that you wouldn't be able to tell as a viewer that he was actually using a camera to take a photo. What a missed opportunity! Couldn't replicate it, of course. But here's a shot that Professor Hines captured of this worker in a bakery shop. But how do we know it's a bakery shop? Well, he shot this at f2.8 where you can still tell in the foreground, those are baked goods. And in the back, you can see the little cart tray for bread, and to the left of the worker, you'll see a little coffee machine. So definitely keep this in mind, don't just blur out everything, try stopping down from time to time to see what you can get. So I encourage everyone to try out the 85 at least once in their lifetime. By the way, if you have a lens lying around that you're not using anymore, consider selling it and funding your new 85, which coincidentally, I have a whole video talking about how to sell your cameras and lenses linked somewhere here on the screen. Tag me on Instagram at Jason V Media. I would love to see your photos and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.